obey God, God is going to bless. So what he does is he tries to sabotage everything that is associated with you. Uh -huh. He comes after your husband. He comes after your wife. He comes after your children. He causes storms in the natural. He causes storms spiritually. And it's interesting because I figured that the Lord would come in and disrupt the program and rescue Peter out. But 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 he did not come and do that. And I, I, but that bothered me a little bit because I said, God, I know you have the power to dismiss anything that the enemy is doing. Why would you not go in and snap? Peter out of it. I mean, we're talking about Peter. This is the man that come off ears for you, Jesus. Why, Lord, would you not do it? He said it wasn't until Peter was kept in the prison, mm -hmm, but the church was earnestly praying for him. He said, I allow Peter to be put into this pr prison of bondage. And I want to just show you for a minute, it doesn't matter what the bondage is. The fact was he was in bondage. Now, he was in jail. Look at Peter as being the pastor because he was the pastor at the time. He was in prison shackled and the church people were not in church. They were having church in their home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Which is something that we're lacking today where people don't, don't have church in their home. Uh -huh. We wait till we get to church to have church but we don't have church in our homes. We don't pray in our homes. We don't fast in our homes. We don't turn off a, uh, you know, whatever we watch and the, the reality shows and put on some good, good gospel stuff. We don't, we don't put on no preaching and say, you know, we just have a preaching day today. We're going to listen to some good uh, some good messages on television. We don't do those types of things very often. Uh, we make our lives at home so comfortable. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be comfortable, but every so often you need to shut everything down uh, so you can hear what God is trying to say. The scripture says that he was in jail and the church family was praying. They were praying for Peter. They were home in the house laying out before the Lord saying, Lord, rescue Peter. Get Peter out of it. Lord, deliver Peter. He's in jail. John just got killed and he's been sawn asunder. Lord, Lord, get him out of prison. See, I'm from the old school where the old mothers used to pray both night and day. Uh, they used to lay before God and say, Lord, loose him completely. Don't let anything attack him. Get him out. Touch that young lady. Touch that young girl. They would lay hands. They would believe. They would get on the phone and do a chain phone link and pray all night. They would say, I'm not eating nothing. I'm not going to work. I'm not going nowhere because we need to make sure that some things happen. One of the things that is missing in the church today is a tenacity to continue. We have a bunch of quitters that are on the team sometimes because as soon as things get tough, they, they quit. Uh, as soon as things get difficult, they back out. They cower away. But I came this morning to tell you that I'm not of the those or the mindset that straight back. I'm from old school bread. I don't believe in dying. I, I believe if I have a heart attack and hit the floor, my spirit will jump back up in my body. I don't, I'm like Jason. I keep coming back. If you're going to kill me, you better cut off my head because I'll bite you in your neck. I'll keep fighting. I don't believe in quitting. Can you say, hey man? in this prison and while he's in the prison the saints are praying uh, what's wrong with us that we won't pray the problem that we're seeing in the church is that folk don't believe that prayer really works uh, we want everything to happen in microwave we want a quick meal we want it faster than a hurry uh, but we will not pray about it we'll argue about it uh, we'll gossip about it but we won't pray about it and God said I'm not going to move uh, on your behalf of your pastor or the church until the church starts to pray. I came this morning to give you a message straight from God's throat. How bad do you want to have a church? How bad do you really admire? How much do you admire this ministry? I'm not talking about so that you can celebritize the pastor, but I'm talking about that you need ministry. See, there's some things I told somebody the other day, I can't, I can't live without a good word in my spirit. I can't live without a pastor preaching the word to me. I can, yeah, I can study for myself, but there are some times I need to sit at somebody's feet and get a word. You don't know everything. I'm going to come and tell you right now. You can study all your little life, but you don't know everything. There's sometimes you need to have somebody speak over you, pray for you, when you can't pray for yourself. There have been times that I've been in situations and I did not have the faith, nor the strength, nor the desire to pray for myself, but I had somebody else praying for me. Can you say amen? Amen. I 
need you to understand that they were praying earnestly. That means they were praying that to the point where they had no more voice. They were praying so much that nothing else mattered. Their appetite didn't matter. Their date night didn't matter. Their movie time didn't matter. Uh, Y'all not going to say nothing to me. Their nail appointment didn't matter. Their hair appointment didn't matter. And you know why? Because they realized that if we don't get the man of God out, we can't get out. Because he is the one that is speaking over the church. Ah, yeah, yes, people are not praying. And he said, you know why people are not praying? It's because they have not gotten to the point where they need ministry bad enough. What does that mean? People are not sick enough. Because when people get sick, they start praying. You ain't lost nothing yet. When you lose, start losing cars and houses, then you're going to start praying. They said they ain't lost no health yet. But when they get sick in their body, they go worry, Doc. They're going to start praying. He said they haven't lost none of their eyesight yet. And when they can't get it fixed by the optometrist, they're going to start praying. When they get a lump in their breast and their nipple falls to their right kneecap, he said they're going to start praying. When they get, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. He said, I know how to get everybody aligned to pray. I'm going to allow circumstances and storms to hit to make you pray. So the scripture says that, that, that Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And, 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 and sentry stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell and he struck Peter on the side. Here's Peter standing sleeping between two soldiers. The angel appears by a brilliance of light, walks into the cell and hits Peter and strikes him and says, Peter, arise quickly. Uh, put on your shoes. And then he said, put your cloak around you. Which tells me that, that, that Peter, first of all, he, if he were going to be delivered, he had to get up quickly. Uh -huh. right. uh, uh -huh. That the doubt do is do it quickly. The angel told him, get up, Peter, quick. But then he told him, that, now let me talk about the getting up. Because what you need to understand so the devil can't defeat you is that anything that you have been through is time for you to stop wallowing in it. Anything that you struggled with or been bound by is time for you to come out of it. Don't sit there and deliberate and question it anymore. Just get up out of it quick. You're not going to say nothing to me. Then he gets up and he tells him, saddle your shoes. Which means that God gave him time to put on his shoes comfortably. Now remember, when he first stood up, the chains fell off. No key, no nothing to unlock it. Which tells me that when you get up of God's accord, that anything that is holding you has to drop off of you. There's not a demon, nor a witch, nor a situation, nor a debt that can hang on to God's people. If we make up our mind, we get, we're going to get up. But the question is, do you want to get up? Jesus always asked people that he healed, do you want to be healed? I thought that was retarded. Of course the man wants to be healed. But not everybody is interested in being delivered. Some people like to be bound. Some people like to be broke. Some people like to be a small little church on the corner. Not I. I don't like to be broke. I don't want to be a small little church on the corner. I don't like, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. But I, but I want it right. I believe in having the best of everything. You're not gonna tell me that the devil would be better to me than God will be better to me. And so Peter is in this prison. And the angel struck him and said, get up. And he said, uh, uh, out of here. The angel said to him, put on your clothes, Peter. Put on your sandals. And he did so. This next move of God is going to be because you did whatever he told you to say. Whatever he said to you, if you do it, you're going to have it. If you pray about it, you're going to get it. If you fast about it, you're going to get the answer. He said, but I need a group of people, a church, that when I tell them to do something, they don't question to me. It doesn't have to make sense. Can I tell you the order of how it's supposed to be? And I'm going to tell you anyway. The first thing is that you're supposed to honor God. No matter what happens, how bad things get, you honor God. If you don't honor God with your tithing and your offering,
already used his mouth, will close the door. You cursed. Uh, that's elementary. Uh, the second person that you honor is the position of the pastor. Uh, you make sure that the man of God has bread enough to eat. Uh, y'all know y'all wouldn't hear me preach this eight years ago. Uh, but I can't, I, I, if I don't tell you, I'm going to be held responsible. All right. Uh, you're supposed to make sure that the needs of the man or woman of God uh, is met to its fullest, not halfway. Uh, that means that the rent is supposed to be paid. Uh, that means the car note is supposed to be paid. Uh, that means the insurance is supposed to be paid. Uh, and it's not that those individual things need to be done. Uh, it's that a lump sum is supposed to be given uh, so that all expenses are covered. Uh, this way, when he gets to the house of God, uh, he doesn't have to be preaching and thinking about what he's got to do next. Who are cursed right now uh, because they only tithe, but they don't give an offering. Uh, he said, Bring the whole tithe uh, and the offering. Uh, you can't do it halfway, you've got to do the whole thing. Uh, you can't just pray, you've got to fast and pray. You're not gonna say nothing. Uh, faith without works is dead. Well, I got faith, but are you working with what the faith you got? You ain't doing nothing unless you got some works with the faith. God said the order is supposed to be that the man of God is set up, that he's taken care of. You should want the pastor to have the best. You know why? Because it is an I want to say an abomination. It is, it is an ill reflection that when I go to a church to preach, the first thing I look at, I look at the man of God. I look at what he's driving. I look at his clothes. I look at his office. I look in his eyes. I look in his eyes to see if the gleam has gone out of his eye. And I can tell before I ever get the rostrum what kind of church he has by the look in his eye. It ain't got to do what you got on, how well you look. It's the look that he has in his eye. If he doesn't have a candlelight in his eye, that means he's not being taken care of. You're not going to say nothing to me. When the man of God is not taken care of, you put handcuffs on him. So they prayed for the man of God. And the Bible says that they passed the first and second gate. Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches. Look at somebody and say, I have an angel. Uh -huh. Y'all said that kind of way. Somebody say, I have an angel. Uh, angels are God's servants that do his bidding. Angels are given to you. They said they react or respond to the word of God that you speak. They don't respond to your voice just because you say something. They respond when you speak the word of God. So when you say, Lord, protect me, the protective angel stand at attention. When you say, no weapon formed against me, they take out their swords on your behalf because they are responding to the word of God. Can I tell you that the scripture says that when they had dawned on him that he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, and called Mark, where there were many people gathered, even praying. Peter walked to the house. When he got to the house, he was knocking on the door, and the church folks were in the house praying. And he was knocking, and here came one of the little servant girls named Rhoda. Somebody shout Rhoda. Rhoda. Uh -huh. And Rhoda came to the door when she got to the door. She said, who is it? And it said, Peter. And she was astonished. She couldn't believe that it was Peter. She, in other words, she didn't believe that Peter was at the door because the saints were in the back room praying. I said, God, what does this mean? He said, Green, it means that people, we are the church is praying, but they have no expectation that I'm going to do what they're praying about. Because if she had expectation, she would have said, come on in, Peter. She left the door closed in her excitement, went back in the room and told the rest of the church that Pastor Peter has been delivered. They said, you must be out of your mind. Now they're still praying. And they said, you must be out of your mind, which tells me they were full of religion. They were not full, really, of the spirit because they should have known with expectation that when I pray for something I expect God to answer 
y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. When I pray, I expect God to move. So she came back to the door. When she got to the door, she said, come on in, Peter. Peter came in the house and told the people, be quiet. Stop praying because I'm already here. I wonder this morning if I had just one person that would believe God for something that you're praying. Get your expectation together. Don't just pray and say whatever. But pray with an expectation that God is about to do what I ask him to do. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. But I want to tell you this morning that Rhoda ain't wrong. Rhoda came to the door and she said, Peter is at the door. But the church would not believe. I came this morning to tell 